Hi, this is Gail with Bernadette of Naperville and welcome to November's Fat Quarter of the Month Club. Now, I had a lot of fun this month because it's kind of like when you leave me alone with a whole bunch of stuff to play with, well, I'm gonna use the whole box of crayons, you know what I mean? So first, we are using these amazing Stripology ruler just to cut some simple strips. Then we're going to use the 60 degree angle tri equilateral triangle ruler from them. And I think you'll see how easy that is to use. And then I decided, you know what, that wasn't enough. I cut all the stuff, I made the top, I wanted to zhuzh it up a little bit, so I quilted it with some of the Aurafil 12 weight cotton thread. Now this stuff works great in your bobbin, it works great through a serger, and it just goes beautifully through your sewing machine, although I did use a 90, at least 90 top stitch needle. So after that was done, it still need, needed a little bit more, so I made a really cute message to put on the what is this? Is this a wall hanging? Is it a tabletop or is it a placemat? Well, I'll leave that for you to decide, but I put a little message on it and then I call this like my twice baked potato look where I quilt something and then I add something else on top with a bright color, whatever. And this time I wanted it to stand out a little bit more. So also in my little box of playthings was some gold paint. So I painted that little message and I just think it worked out perfectly. Now, you can bind this quilt with your favorite method. I um, just had barely enough of the fabric that I wanted to use to do the binding. So instead of cutting my normal two and a half inch wide binding, I actually cut it at one and a half. And at the one and a half, I pressed one edge over a quarter of an inch and then I sewed it to the back and then brought it around to the front and continued to stitch it with that beautiful thick thread. And voila, it's done. And now, well, I want to just make a whole bunch of these because I think they'll be beautiful placemats for Thanksgiving. All right, so why don't we get started and look at these cute little fabrics that we have for this month's Fat Quarter Club. These are all from Lewis and Irene. And I thought these little field mouse fabrics were super cute. And I kind of took a light purple, dark purple red from the collection and paired it with some of these prints. And if you want more information about this project, don't forget that you can download this interactive handout that I'm working from in the description of the YouTube video or on our website under Fat Quarter Club. So there are some additional supplies that we're gonna need on top of our six quarters that are in the Fat Quarter Club kit. I'm using Aurifil 12 weight cotton thread in that bright green color, and there's a link to that in the handout. I'm using an Isocord 40 weight thread to match. Now, of course, you could pick whatever colors you wanted. And then I'm sewing this together with an Aurifil bright pink 50 weight thread. You're also gonna need some machine feet. So I used a patchwork foot, quarter inch foot, um, the 97D for my Bernina. I'm also using an open toe dual feed foot for the binding. That's the number 20D and I'm used a walking foot to do the quilting. Obviously, if you're going to do some embroidery, you're gonna need the number 26 embroidery foot. You're gonna need a batting scrap that measures about 19 inches by 23 inches. So let's get started. So we're gonna start with taking four of our fabrics from our six fat quarters and I'm using the green field mice, the light purple, the um, green other mice, and the red. And I'm folding my fat quarters in half like this so that I can use my medium size stripology ruler. Now these stripology rulers are awesome and I'm gonna take on my fabrics, they're nice and straight and folded, and I'm gonna line that folded edge to a reference line at the bottom of the ruler and I'm gonna trim off some extra at the beginning. Now this ruler is letting me cut in half inch increments. So I'm gonna cut a few strips here and I'm starting at the zero line. Then I'm gonna move over to the two and a half inch line. Then at the five inch line. And that's about all you need. I cut a little bit extra because I was playing around a little bit. And, um, and so I cut four two and a half inch strips with mine. But nonetheless, um, you can make as many of these as you want. You can make one placemat or you can make several. If you decide that you're going to make several, you will need to purchase some additional 
backing fat quarters and and don't forget to save some of your extras if you want to make more than just what you saw me cut here in the video. So now that you've got your strips cut, you're going to need to sew them together. And I did mine in pairs. I paired the red with the more multicolored print and I paired the lighter purple with the sagey color. And then I sewed my strips together using my quarter inch foot, the number 97D. Then I pressed them to the side. And you can see that I chain pieced. And then it was time to use our equilateral 60 degree ruler from Creative Grids. Now, Creative Grids does have videos that you can follow along. We do have a link in the description of this video in our handout so that you can see uh, other ways to use this ruler. But we used it very simply. We lined the raw edge of the bottom of the strip up to the four and a half inch line. And then that allowed us, you can see there, the tip is right at the other edge of the strip. And then we just simply cut on the right side of the triangle and then down the left side. Now this is gonna give me a triangle with a light green base. You can see there it's a nice flat tip so you can line them up to do the piecing. Now when I turn the ruler around this time, I can cut on the right side and I'm gonna have a purple base. And it just means that we're gonna have mirrored or, or negative versions of this triangle, one with a green base and one with a purple base. And you can kind of put them together as you cut them out and you can see how cute that looks already. And you wanna repeat this process for the other pair of Now there's another way that you can line things up. Now you can see here, this is the alternating the two complementing pieces. But if you wanna have a different look, you could take all six of your matching pieces and line those up and you're gonna get more of a traditional hexy looking piece. And this looks pretty good with the more solid like fabric in the middle. But when I line them up, with the larger print, I didn't get quite that kaleidoscope look that could have been super cool because I didn't pay attention to where I was cutting in the pattern. So for that reason, I decided to go with this look. Now we're gonna sew these together in like little two little rows of three. And it's important to line that intersection up where the two strips meet and use your quarter of an inch on your sewing machine to stitch them together. Once you have a pair set, you're gonna sew the other piece on to have three, and then continue the same with the bottom row. And as I bring this over to my sewing machine, you're gonna see that I line these guys up. The one with the flat piece is kinda of nice because we won't have like a little puppy ear on the end. We're gonna get it under that foot like you see there. I'm using my freehand system to raise and lower my presser foot. And now I'm stitching carefully, also making sure that that seam remains flat and then you can see here at the bottom, I've got those two little triangle pointy pieces. They're gonna come into play in just a moment. And then if you are brave enough, you can chain piece, but um, remember, we're just sewing three pieces on the top row and three pieces on the bottom row, but it is important to line up those little intersections like that. Once you have your pieces stitched together, you're gonna to press the seams open. Then you're gonna turn it right side up and add the piece for the other side. And you can see the intersection looks pretty good. And then we have to grab the other side piece there and see how everything is alternating. And then we're gonna stitch that piece together and you might want to use a little stiletto or something to make sure everything gets perfectly placed and flat. And then once again, we're going to press this seam open. And the important thing here is that we're going to have a really sharp little point that's created just outside of the seam allowance as we turn that over. And we want to make sure that when we do our next row and sew that together, 
that we also have a nice little sharp point there. So I'm going to just lay out my top row and stitch this top row together just like I had stitched that bottom row. And we're going to press those pieces open after we stitch them. And then you can see my little triangle piece there. So we're going to line these together and I use a straight pin, a long straight pin. And I poke that pin right at the very tip of my pieces where that little triangle tip is at the very, 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 very center of it, just like that. And then I'm going to jab this other piece right at its intersection, just like that. And then I come back with another straight pin that isn't like piercing perpendicular like that. I'm going to take my other straight pin and hold this together once I feel very confident that I have everything lined up perfectly. And then once you take this over to the machine, we're going to be careful not to sew over our pin, but we do want to make sure that we don't remove the pin too soon. So the same things apply. We're going to get those little triangles lined up at the top of our piece and that crucial intersection where the two strips meet. Make sure everything is lined up and pretty. And it's easier to zhuzh this fabric because it's been cut on the bias. And so sometimes I think that it's a little bit easier because it's a little bit more forgiving as you wiggle things into position. There I am pulling that pin out. We don't want to stitch over that pin. And then lining up my little intersection there. And just using my stiletto to assist me all the way down. And then there you can see my nice little perfect intersection that we're going to press open. And then we're just going to make, for this one project, we're just going to make three other pieces of these. And I did two with my multicolor and red and then two with the green and the purple. Once you have your four blocks sewn together, we need to attach those together. And I put it in a layout that requires us using an equilateral triangle as a setting triangle. So let's go grab some of our darker purple fabric and we're going to use our stripology ruler to cut two four and a half inch strips and we're going to use one of the strips to cut our four equilateral triangles from our 60 degree equilateral ruler. And these are going to be cut similar to our strips that were joined together, except we don't have a seam in the middle. And once these four pieces are cut, we're going to take another strip and fold it wrong sides together and cut a half equilateral triangle, I suppose that would be a right triangle, using the seam line on the other side of the center line, just like this, and cut. And we'll need four sets of mirrored items for this. Once you have all of your pieces cut for the setting triangles, just lay them out nicely and make sure that you know the stitching order. Now in our handout that's in the description of this video, I have kind of a page that labels the sewing order for this because they look a little bit weird. But basically what you're gonna do after you get everything laid out, you're gonna sew a top left corner to a bottom right corner, then a bottom left corner. And then that's gonna be a unit. And then on the other side, you're going to be sewing the top left, then a bottom right, and a top right. And you repeat the exact same thing for the bottom row. Now, I talked about those little dog ears or puppy ears or whatever, and I like to line the triangles up with the triangles that are poking out when I do my setting triangle. And we're just going to stitch a quarter of an inch again. 
And you're going to sew this no matter if it's one of the right angle triangles or the equilateral triangle. You're going to line them up with those little puppy ears, stitching with your quarter of an inch. And then I don't press these seams open, I press them to the darker purple. And now in this configuration, I still need to add my bottom left corner piece there. And then we press that over once we stitch it. And then we put this unit aside and add a red unit where we're gonna stitch the top left corner and the bottom right corner with our quarter inch seam press and then add the top right corner. Now, once everything is done in this row, we're going to use that straight print pin trick again to attach that seam and make it look perfect. And it's see how like it's lined up not totally straight? Well, that's because we have a 60 degree angle there. So we have kind of this wonky little angle, but the most important thing at first is to take that pin through that intersection so that they line up perfect, perfect, perfectly. And then once everything gets wiggled into position, you take that second straight pin and hold it together and then distribute it. If you need to pin, go ahead and pin. And then of course, you'll take this over to your seat. There, there, those little tips, they need to line up nicely. And that's how you know that your equilateral triangle is centered into position just so. And now we do a quarter of an inch using my stiletto as a little helper. And then we're gonna pull the pin before we stitch through it. And pull the pin out before you stitch through it. And now that gives you a row and you're gonna repeat that same thing for a second row. And then you're gonna join these two rows together. And this one, you have a lot of intersections to match up. So you're gonna do that safety pin trick all along that row, making sure that all of your crucial points are lined up and everything is looking pretty. And you have one last seam and I just kind of carefully and slowly stitch using my quarter of an inch seam. You're gonna take your time now to press that seam open, get everything nice and flat. And congratulations, we've completed our piecing and I really like the way it came out. And now it's just time to quilt it. And um, you know, there's about a gajillion ways that you could quilt this, but we're gonna take that fat quarter, make sure it fits within that. And oh my gosh, that cute little mouse with its little fuchsia bow tie or toy or whatever, I can't stand it. Okay, so now I'm just gonna sandwich my three pieces together using some 505 spray. And I sandwich, I always spray the batting rather than the fabric. And now just smooth everything out. And now I've decided that I'm gonna use my 12 weight Aurifil green thread and then a matching isocord in the bobbin. So the Aurifil on top and, the, and then the isocord in the bobbin. And then this is the 20D foot. You could certainly use this foot if you wanted for this exercise, but I actually really wanted to try the walking foot instead. And I have also attached the guide onto the walking foot. And if you want an in-detailed walking foot video, I've put a link to it in our handout because I made one showing how to use everything with a walking foot. Now, Here's a little word to the wise here. If you're using a Bernina 880 with that automatic needle threader or your Bernina 790 Pro, you're gonna have to manually thread your needle because those automatic needle threaders don't work with the walking foot. So just remember that. And then this was probably the hardest part of the project was me trying to thread the needle. <laughs> And then once I get the everything threaded and the foot is on and all of that, I want to set that guide on my walking foot. So I'm grabbing a little ruler and my strips were two and a half inches and then sewn into the block. They're two inches. 
So I'm setting my guide at one inch from center needle position. And then once I get that together, I can just line that right guide up with the seam of my hexi. And I am going to be stitching all over the place on this quilt. And I've included a little quilting diagram in the handout just so you can see exactly everywhere that I quilted this piece. But what I'm trying to do is go right down the center of each of the strips. And there you can see. So it kind of creates this little hexy and setting triangle and whatever look. And it was easy and it was fun. I've got the camera sped up, but I did not go super fast using my walking foot. But this didn't take very long either. Once it was done, I still thought it needed just a little bit more. So you know what I did? I created in the Bernina Embroidery software a saying that says thankful. And I decided that I was going to give that to you as well if you wanted to add this onto your piece. So I've digitized it for you. You can download it inside this handout. And I used a bright fuchsia color because I kind of call this my twice baked potato look. It's where I quilt something and then I come back with a bright thread and I add another layer of quilting. But um, this time I'm going to quilt using the jumbo hoop and I don't have any stabilizer or anything. I'm just using the quilt itself. It's enough of a stabilizer. And so I'm doing my best to sort of kind of get this centered in the hoop. And then once I get that all connected, I'll bring it over to the machine where I have my design picked and I'm just going to easily embroider this. And once again, I do have the same thread in the top and bottom. And always make sure that you don't over crank your jumbo or your maxi hoops. You can crank it like a couple times, but not a whole lot. So over on my machine, when I pick my design, I can use my pinpoint placement to make sure I get this design accurately in the hoop. And I'm just using the seam lines of my blocks. I've got a center seam vertically and horizontally. And so I set that first seam and then I go back to set the bottom piece and then I can just embroider my little heart out. <laughs> and this really didn't take very long. And you know, I love it. I think it's cute, but I want it to make more of a statement. So guess what? After this finishes, we're gonna add an extra touch. And I left it in the hoop to do this. I don't know why, no particular reason, but I grabbed some of my gold paint. This is a, uh, whatever Michaels has. I have it in the handout, the exact thing that I used, but I used a small little artist brush and I just came in and carefully painted only the fabric, trying not to paint my um, pink thread, but it was pretty easy. The, the paint spreads very easily, so I didn't have any problems staying in the lines, but um, it was fun. It was kind of therapeutic, and I honestly think this took me less time than it would have to use metallic gold thread and fill in such a large word. <laughs> I was thankful for my gold paint. <laughs> you know, here's the deal. I just trimmed this up using my 6 by 24 inch ruler, and there are so many videos that we've done on binding. You can bind this however you want, but I just decided that I was going to bind this kind of the way I always do, but I had a little bit of a change to how I cut the binding, and that's because I did not have very much of this light purple left. I, I cut too many strips. Um, you will not have this problem, but I had this problem because I plan on making like a placemat set, a placemat set, and so I didn't have quite enough fabric. So I, instead of cutting a normal two and a half inch or so of binding, I cut one and a half inch pieces, and I cut four one and a half inch pieces of what I had left, and that worked nicely. I sewed them together using that mitered edge. And then I used my hot hammer to press a quarter of an inch over rather than that normal way that you would do like a French hem where you press it in half or whatever. And, and it worked out, it was fine. And so I stitched my binding to the back of the quilt, then top stitched 
using my number 20 D foot and my bright green Aurafil 12 weight thread in the top and the isocord in the bobbin. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope that you have fun making this and you have permission to play with your big box of crayons. All right, well, don't forget to check us out at our Bernina of Naperville YouTube channel. It's easy. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville and there you can like, comment, and subscribe. Happy Thanksgiving!